Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Spec Podcast. I'm Max. I'm joined today by my colleague, Ryan. Hello. Hey, it's great to see you. Great to see you, Ryan. Today, we're filling in for Francie. She's not gone anywhere. She's going to be doing podcast episodes. Don't worry. You won't be stuck with me. But uh, today, you are. But Ryan, I want to talk with you about a somewhat nerdy note that I think is kind of interesting for a lot of Tesla owners, specifically you yourself being among those. Uh, so Ryan, you have a Tesla Model 3. And as I understand it, you love the software on it, right? Yeah, it's really great. It's really well done. There's no Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. However, there's a lot of functionality and a good number of apps, and it does almost everything that I'd want it to do. Yes, but there's always possibilities and things where you could have third-party apps the way you do, of course, on a phone uh, and through things like Apple CarPlay. So Ryan, like already in a Tesla, you can play games, you can stream Netflix and YouTube, uh, you can play Spotify and title music and playlist uh but you can't order starbucks you can't order chick-fil-a uh you can't as i understand it watch amazon prime video right so like of course nothing's stopping tesla from making official partnerships and incorporating those apps but the prospect of tesla having an app store where you could manage what's installed on your vehicle and having some kind of open access where developers can uh, you know submit apps and have them come to the vehicle that's been tantalizing there's been signs as of this last summer that could be possible. Certainly. And it's really exciting. Yes, but it's not here yet. Uh, this is just a concept image that's been shown. Uh, but the news today that I want to talk about, Ryan, is that uh, Tesla does have official API documentation now, uh, which is very exciting. So basically, they've been taking a lot of what's been unofficial and kind of hacky and used by existing apps that I want to talk about with you today. Uh, and they're making it official. So first, Ryan, let's just talk about like, okay, Tesla API, it's now official, but it has existed. What has it been like able to be used for? And I think the first big example that a lot of people watching this who are out of spec nerds will be familiar with is a service like Teslafy, which lets you log a lot of data on your car. I think you've used this before, Ryan. Um, yeah, I use it extensively. This? It's yeah. fantastic. It gives you so much data. It's well organized and well presented. I think it's a really great service. Yeah, great if you're an energy nerd or you just are curious how your vehicle is consuming energy, you want a way to log trips. I mean, it does a lot of stuff. It's a premium service too. So it's like a business that runs off the Tesla API. And now the developers can breathe a little easier because that API is official and documented, which must be great for them. And you just installed, Brian, a really cool app uh, as well that I want to talk about. Yeah, I downloaded it onto my Apple Watch and Basically, it's meant to be a Tesla key on your wrist, and it does work. It has a lot of the functionality, but it doesn't have every functionality. And there are a few things that feel a little bit janky, uh, kind of just glued together. Uh, and hopefully with more API documentation, this will only improve. They'll get a better integration, more access to everything, and just a smoother experience from the user. Yeah, that would be the hope. And we got to differentiate just so we're not confusing people, Ryan. Like at the outset, we talked about the possibility of apps on the vehicle. We're at this point talking about apps on other platforms like your watch or Tesla Fi, which you can access on the computer or through any kind of view on a web, uh, the, the, the interface with Tesla. So that's what's been possible so far. It's still what's possible. Uh, but it does suggest, Ryan, that there's more groundwork being laid for that possibility of an app that can both interface with your Tesla and actually be on your Tesla display as like a different icon or something that you can use. Uh, and so we've actually seen this already. Uh, this may be related to the news we uh, just learned about um, that Tesla, right, as of uh, last month, enabled Hertz rental drivers to finally use the Tesla app that you were talking about, right, that you use it kind of as like a car key uh, to be able to use it. Uh, on a rental Tesla, which is great. Until now, you've had to use the awkward kind of like credit card method. Now Hertz drivers can do that because Tesla provisioned a special app for Hertz on their vehicles. Right, and I think this is actually a really great example of some of the possibilities and what we could expect to see in the future. Yeah. Like, let's say this is official at the moment for Hertz and it's, you know, not out of pattern for Tesla because they have those official partnerships uh, for consumers with Spotify and Tidal and Netflix. Uh, this is just an industry specific one. But Ryan, I'm thinking like beyond Hertz, if uh, Turo were to 
be able to have access to an SDK and develop an app that Turo renters could install on their Tesla, then that's going to open up, uh, you know, that uh, to be a lot more of a seamless experience for the people using that to rent their cars. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting opportunity. Yeah. There's all kinds of ways you can imagine, Ryan, just Tesla's or vehicles being used in general uh, that this opens up to in more seamless, nice ways, still integrating all of the Tesla, um, all of the kind of Tesla polish and data that, you know, people know and love uh, police departments, all kinds of, you know, fleet customers. They're using Tesla's. Uh, I think the long and short of it, Ryan, is like if cars are going to be computers, we want them to be as configurable as computers. And while Tesla has all this headway with an API, uh, uh, the potential of like an SDK, which we don't know about yet, but could happen. Uh, it just excites me a lot. And I, I'm sure it excites you and like seeing more of these potential use cases. Right. These cars are already coming with incredible hardware that's very, very capable. And it's exciting to see that software will finally be, finally be catching up. And I think one thing that'll be really cool is that there's going to be a lot of app developers who are able to create something that we can't even think of right now. I think it's only going to create a great experience for users. That's true. We've seen it on phones, and I think we are about to see it on cars. And of course, Tesla, as in many respects of software, seems to be leading the way here. I should say, though, Ryan, that uh, there are third-party app stores on vehicles that aren't Tesla, so maybe, maybe some ways those are leading uh, vehicles with Android Automotive, not to be confused with Android Auto, terrible naming, uh, but Android Automotive, which is an OS that underlies vehicles made by Volvo, Polestar, and General Motors at the moment, among alongside more automakers like Honda in the future. Um, it has an app store, Ryan, so I can install Waze on my Polestar, or I can install like a YouTube client. I can install a plug share as an app. Like there's a lot of cool things I can do in that respect. However, the awkward thing is like, unlike Tesla, I can't, let's say like interface with the climate control system on my Polestar to enable like a pet mode or do things like that, um, or do those deeper integrations that like Watchla you just showed us, right, is able to do at Tesla. That's because while like the screen part, the computer part of the car is still standardized with Android Automotive, the actual ability to interface with the car parts of the car are not standardized. And manufacturers, like, and I don't want to get too much into this, but General Motors are exploring the possibility of doing this, Ryan. But the long and short of it is that this is so uncertain still. Uh, it's like, okay, there's an open source promise. There's a hope that like an app developer could make an app uh, that you know works across different vehicles. Uh, it's very unclear at the moment. It sounds like it's much more optimistic, I think, to see this from Tesla first, given how they work, how integrated they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is certainly early days for everything. And we'll see a lot of development and a lot of change over the coming months and years. But it's a really exciting new feature. And I think it's going to bring a lot of really cool features to a bunch of different manufacturers. Absolutely. Not a user facing feature, but matters for developers. And like you outlined, they could come up with use cases that we haven't even imagined yet. So if you're a developer for Tesla, you work on a cool kind of Tesla app, or uh, you're working on Android Automotive, and what I said, you know, you're, you have some thoughts about, uh, please get in touch with Francie. Her email is in the Out of Spec podcast to your description. Um, and we'd love to talk to you about what it's like developing software for vehicles, because that's becoming increasingly important. And uh, yeah, that's, I mean, API documentation, it's exciting. It's a first step here uh, towards seeing uh, deeper third-party apps built into Tesla specifically. But I think as we touch on today, it covers the whole auto industry as they pitch their cars more and more as computers on wheels. Right. It'll be really cool to see. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this one, Ryan. A bit of a nerdier episode, but a cool kind of look at the software and what could be possible. And uh, see you in the next one. See ya.